Spring training starts this weekend, and players looking to break some of baseball's biggest records may now have a higher hill to climb. Major League Baseball has at long last recognized statistics from the players who played in the Negro Leagues, meaning some long-standing records have changed hands. So let's bring in ESPN baseball analyst and former Major League outfielder Doug Glanville, who did a stint with my Cubbies, among other teams, <laughs> alongside our political director, baseball junkie and student of the game, Rick Klein, for more. And Doug, welcome. Let me ask you first, you know, what, what does this move, recognizing the achievements the, in statistics of the great ball players in the Negro Leagues, what does it mean to the game and, and to you as a, a black man who played Major League Baseball? It's an effort to really connect the dots. You know, you're trying to capture a history that had so many stories of perseverance, so many stories of really legendary performers that didn't have the opportunity due to race and due to the dynamics of race in America at the time. So they're trying to go back and make some reconciliation. And in, and in doing that, they can connect the dots to the stories uh, that were also lost in that. So you're talking about figures that were pioneers. They were part of an entrepreneurial spirit, which also suffered when Major League Baseball uh, was able to capture the great talents of Jackie Robinson coming through. That was virtually the end, or pretty much mm -hmm. the end, of Negro League Baseball. So uh, that's an effort when a game that is in, impassioned, they love the sense of numbers and the collections, and this is a way to tie it all together. That's right. We're stat heads, baseball fans, and it does bring us closer to those achievements in the Negro League. So, Rick, what records do you think we might see broken due to this change? with this reconciliation around baseball's history and baseball statistics. Hugh Duffy hit a ridiculous 440 in 1894. <laughs> Even Glanville, who was a heck of a good college player at Penn, he didn't get that in college. No one comes close to that. But it turns out, depending on how you count the statistics, and our friends at 538 are finding a season where Josh Gibson hit, get this, 466 in 1943. The other thing that's interesting about that is 1943, of course, is two years after 1941, which is when Ted Williams very famously hit 406. So this would make uh, Josh Gibson the holder mm -hmm. of the most recent 400 season, the highest batting average for a season, and in addition to that, potentially the highest batting average in a career. Those are astounding, ridiculous, insane numbers for anybody. And the legendary Josh Gib Gibson getting some recognition statistically, as I say. Our friends at 538, they crunch a lot of numbers. They built an algorithm to compare the stats of players from the Negro Leagues with Hall of Famers and current pros. And they compared, compared each player's uh, wins above replacement. That's WAR, which measures a player's value in the game by determining how many more wins he's worth than a replacement player. So, Doug, what do you think of the, the analysis 538 didn't? What stood out in it to you? What I appreciate about war is that it's an effort to capture wins and value. You know, you always attribute it historically to a pitcher, right, a 20-game winner. And so as we've looked at the position players, it's created a nice discussion across eras. So you can say, here's a great player with this kind of war during their 10-year career, mm. and we can look at how they were relative to their peers at that time. And that's nice because baseball loves the discussions around eras and saying who was great in the 20s and can you compare Babe Ruth to Barry bonds and so on. So it's allowed that conversation to now break in uh, with the Negro League players. Now, one interesting question would be, with the Negro League players, would you be able to compare them to their current players of their time? And that's what's sort of different, because this looks at current players today. But often with war, you're looking at the era by which you played or in which you played. Mm. Brick, when you look at the comparisons, there are a lot of red dots, uh, as we just saw, sort of representing Negro League players mingled in with Hall of Famers. So could we see more of these players inducted into Cooperstown because of the work that's being done assessing their statistics this way? There are some names that are starting to come out. We asked our friends at 538 to look at this, and they found names like Dobie Moore, not a name that I knew, but uh, a 10-plus war for a season. That's that'll, that'll get you in the hall, no question. And a couple mm -hmm. of pitchers, William Bell and Bill Bird, who uh, it looks like they are they were the Greg Maddox and Juan Marichal of their days. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to learn more about those gentlemen and many, many more. And I think, I think the Hall of Fame and baseball historians will have uh, a lot of fun trying to track down all of the stats, all of the stories, all of the legends, uh, and, and, and trying to connect some of those threads to where they belong, which is Cooperstown. 
And, you know, Doug, I'm old enough to remember some of the players who went into the major leagues. Of course, Henry Aaron was one, but also Ernie Banks, my favorite player as a kid. Uh, and so as we dive a little deeper into some of these Negro League players, who, who do you think, if people don't know about, who should everyone know about, do you think? Well, you think about Oscar Charleston. I mean, there's 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 a few names that I mean, we know Satchel Paige, Josh Gibson, sort of the legends, but there were so many good players that were versatile, and Charleston just kind of did it all. Certainly on the offensive side, speed and power and hitting for average, uh, just an incredible. And he played, you know, a significant amount of time. I think the Hall of Fame is going to have an interesting challenge because they're in a crisis somewhat because you're. Also looking at PEDs and the drug culture, which has really changed the records. And now you're bringing in a whole generation and era from the Negro Leagues to try to figure out how it comes together. So that's a tall order, but it's, it's a great uh, and a necessity exercise uh, as we really think about the context of these great players. Absolutely. If you love baseball, you've got to love this. My favorite Satchel Page stat is at the age of 59 in 1965, he pitched three innings of shutout baseball at the major league level. Tom Brady, eat your heart out. So Doug Glanville, <laughs> Rick Klein, thanks very much for this. Thank you. Thank you. What a great story there, bringing the history of baseball, so plagued by the history of our country in some ways, together in this way. Uh, it'll start arguments, which is what baseball is all about. In some ways. <laughs> that is one way to put it. It's glad, uh, glad to see that those players will finally get the recognition they have so long deserved. And glad you're teaching us a little bit about baseball in general here, Terry. A lot of us <laughs> were confused over those numbers. We're learning a few things. It's good. It's fun. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm now part of baseball history myself just as a fan for that long. All right. There you go. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.